if you've got uh, a high-end Nikon or Canon and you've got a blind and you've got all the professional gear and the fancy flash and the tripods and remotes, this is not for you. That's not what I'm talking about. This is for you're at home, you've got some feeders out on the back porch or in the side yard and you've got your cell phone and you want to take a decent picture. There are some rules. Over the years, I've looked at a lot of pictures and there's a couple of things that, that are problems that I see far too often that can be eliminated. One of them is the bird is just too small in the picture. I see, uh, oh, it just so happens there's a great example right there. Beautiful <laughs> picture, great feeder, good background. I think there's a red type bird on the right hand side of that feeder. Oh, we'll just zoom in on it. You can't and right. still have a quality picture because you're, with your cell phone, most likely you're using uh, digital zoom. You're not zooming, you're just taking a smaller and smaller bite of that file. So then you take that little bitty one and try to bring it up to calendar size or a large print size. You don't have enough pixels to give you a sharp image. And so you get a fuzzy picture you can't use. So the number one problem we run into is the bird or the subject of the picture is just too small in the overall picture. And for composition, not that we're too concerned about real composition, but you like to see at least 25% of the overall picture taken up by the subject. The feeder and the bird, or just the bird. Uh, if it's much less than 25%, you've got, unless there's a really beautiful background, uh, I mean, that's not a bad picture, but you can't see what you want to see. So that's one thing. Try to get closer, and uh, we'll, we'll go into some, some of the ways to combat these problems, but that's number one. The bird's too small in the picture. Number two, the lighting's wrong. And we just go snap these pictures and something's wrong. Here's a shot just, oh, out the, out the back door. What's the problem? Gee, there's a kitchen light shining right into the glass on our side of it, and it ruins the picture. And sometimes that glares right across everything. This one, you have a little bit of salvage, but the picture's a little washed out because of it. So you got lighting problems two ways. One, if you're shooting from inside, which you probably will be, and there's lights in the room you're in, you're gonna get a glare on the glass and you can't overcome that. The other thing is lighting outside. Here's, here's one where it's actually taken through a window. So you don't have glare on the inside because the room's dark, but the problem is you've got lighting behind the subject. So you get this interesting picture but you can't see what the bird, you can't see the details of the bird because the lighting is behind it and washes it out. That happens a lot. So there's two ways you have to be careful about the lighting. One, if it's in the room you're in, you want to dim all those lights. And if it's if you're shooting outside and there's light behind the subject, you're probably going to have a washed out bird like that. Then there's another group of problems that I'll just throw in as as really the watch for your background. I make this mistake all the time. I take a picture of a bird, say, oh, it's great. Then I fail to look at what's behind the bird or to the side of the bird. And it's really a stupid looking picture with a cute bird and a terrible background. Maybe there's trash on the ground next to the bird, or maybe the background is somebody's garage door. You, and that's not what you need. You just think about what's in the background and if you think ahead when you're staging pictures or getting ready to, just think, well, if every time I take a picture out this window, I'm going to see that thing over there. So be sure to aim differently or move that thing over there. Plan ahead. Uh, so that's, that's the background's ugly. We, we, we can address that. The lighting is wrong. We can address that. And the bird's too small. <laughs> we can address that. Like I said, this is not for the professionals. This is for grab your cell phone, take the shot. And there's some great pictures in our calendars taken just like that. And you can do it too. So lighting. Just be aware that if you're in your house and the bird's outside, turn out the lights in the room you're in. And that should reduce the glare on your windows on your side. Get close to the glass. If you have to, you can even put a tile above you, drape it over your head to block the light from behind you, hitting the glass where you're taking the picture. You'll get a much clearer picture out through there. 
Don't have to be fancy, not a big fancy blind or anything you have to, equipment you have to buy, just a sheet or, or something that blocks the light from behind you hitting the glass. Then just be aware of what's behind the bird. If there's bright sunlight, maybe you can wait to a different part of the day where the sun's not too bright on the objects behind your bird that you're taking a picture of, and you'll get a much clearer picture. So that's addressable. And uh, maybe shoot your pictures out of a different window. Maybe move a feeder to get pictures if you want them. Then there's uh, how small the bird is. You can, one, get close. Two, zoom in the picture, but there's a problem with that. There's just two best ways to do it. Uh, get close, it's easy if you want to be still, sit down, uh, put a blanket around you in a chair not too far from the feeders, and once you're still for a while, the birds will ignore you and come right up to the feeder, and you can get within a 10 or 15 feet of the feeder and still have birds on it. If uh, that's not the case, uh, then you have to zoom, but your phone doesn't real have a real zoom. It is a digital zoom, and it just takes a smaller and smaller piece of that digital picture, and then it looks very pixelated when you bring it up to calendar size, just like what you're seeing right there. That was the same picture we showed. Uh, it was too far off in the distance, and you bring it up and try to make it look nice, it's, you can't use it. Right. So you have to get closer to your subject or bring your subject closer to you. Or you can zoom a little bit on digital if you've got a, a good camera, that's fine. But just be aware that you, the really small birds in a big picture aren't very useful. So just right. make the adjustments that you can make to overcome that. Yeah, and keep the feeders clean so that the background looks nice and that yeah. sort of thing. And so yeah. those are great tips. The, the feeder clean thing is a mistake I have made far too often. Me you too. You would think yeah. you would learn, but uh, I take the picture. It's a great picture, great birds, dirty feeder. Yeah. Not that I ever have dirty feeders, but it has happened. Yeah. It happens to this the best. This happens ones. sometimes when you do things right. Yeah. Look it's, at that. That's beautiful. It just happens. I mean, every picture is not that nice, but it's got interest. It's got a variety of birds. The lighting's nice. The background's okay. And it's big enough. The resolution's high enough to. Uh, make it so you can expand it to calendar size and, and have a nice shot. Were you zoomed in on that or were you really close? Zoomed a little bit and fairly close, probably yeah. eight feet away, nine yeah. feet, being real still, just sitting there. Yeah. And I had to, I put the little camera on a tripod so it didn't shake. Yeah. And then I could just push the button when, when the bird was there. I didn't have to make any movements and scare it off. But right. I could sit right there and watch them. Hello, this is Richard Cole. I want to thank each of you for watching, and I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to share it.